Now we've come to the point in our quadcopter build with the Pixhawk flight controller where we've assembled everything onto the frame that we want to fly with and now we're going to set it up with the Mission Planner software and configure the Pixhawk flight controller. So let's get started. To begin with, we need to get the Mission Planner software and install it on our computer or our laptop or our tablet, uh, whatever uh, device that you're going to be using. To do that, we need to go to Ardu or ardupilot.com. That's A R D U P I L O T.com. And then go to the Downloads tab, then to Mission Planner. Scroll down. This is uh, Mission Planner for Windows, Windows 7. Um, so hit the Download button. And then we will do Save and Run. And that just takes a few seconds to download that. Okay, and now we've come to the installation wizard. So we just press next. Read through the terms of agreement and click accept and then next. Let it install to the mission planner directory which is the default and then press next and then install. Just takes a second or two. And we will accept it, allow it to install. And then it's going to ask you to install the drivers. You're going to click Next, and it'll copy over the drivers that are needed, and then click Finish. The Install Wizard is just finishing up. And now it says Completed the Mission Planner Wizard, and we're going to click Launch to launch the planner. Okay, once we're in the planner, now we have to plug in the USB cable to the Pixhawk flight controller. Once the USB cable is connected to the computer and the Pixhawk. Then we want to go over to Initial Setup and we want to install our firmware onto the Pixhawk. So we're going to pick the Arducopter, the X frame, And then it gives us instructions to please unplug the board, or please unplug the board, or it's referring to the USB cable, and then press OK. So let's unplug that and plug it back in. And then we'll press OK. Now don't be surprised if it gives an error message the first time.
I'm waiting for it to connect. This is no response from board. So we'll hit that again. Do this a second time. And press OK. There we go. Now it's erasing uh, previous firmware because we've had firmware on this particular Pixhawk board. Now it's installing the Argucopter firmware. And then it gives us a message to wait for the musical tones to finish before we press OK. So you can hear the musical tones. Now it's finished. So now we'll press OK. And then it tells us that if we're installing the firmware for the first time, we, we have to do a compass calibration. Well, we know that, so we'll hit OK. Now we'll go into the wizard here on the side. Nice little board pops up and we'll pick the multi-rotor as the vehicle that we want to install. Hit next and ours is a X-frame. Don't pick this. It looks like an X-frame but it's actually, if you notice, uh, these are closer together and the software refers to this as a V-frame, not a V-tail but a V-frame. So we want to go to the X-frame when it's green, click Next. And now it's going to ask us uh, what COM port. We click this down and it'll say COM3. You want to, whatever port you're on, you want to pick the one that says PX4 FMU. So that could be COM5, COM6. It all depends on your particular device. But whatever um, communication port is the correct one for the this stage will say PX4 FMU so we just pick that and hit next now it asks us to unplug the board again or the USB cable and plug it back in and then hit OK now in our case, because we've had this firmware already installed once, it tells us that there's no need to upload. It's already on the board. So we're just going to hit OK, but you'll be waiting for it to install. Now it's going to connect through COM3. There we go. And now at the beginning of the wizard, it says frame layout. So I know we picked that once already, but it asks us a second time. We hit next. So in the accelerometer calibration, between, it's going to ask us to turn the quadcopter on its side, upside down, nose up, etc. In between each position, we want to hold it for a few seconds before we enter in order to give the Pixhawk flight controller a chance to stabilize. So let's hit start. It asks us to place the vehicle on a uh, level and press any key. So the vehicle is level, so we'll press a key. Now it asks us to place it on its left side and press any key. So we'll turn it on its left side, hold it for a couple seconds, and then press a key. Now it will ask us to turn it on its right side. And then we'll press a key. And now it asks us to turn it nose down. Give it a couple of seconds. 
press the key and it allows us to do nose up. Press the key and then it asks us to turn it on its back, which is upside down. And press a key. Now we have a successful calibration. Now we can hit next. Now it asks us to do the cal to calibrate our compass. So we're going to hit live calibration. It says please click OK and move the autopilot around all axes in a circular motion. So we're going to hit OK and what we're doing is aiming for these white dots. So we'll begin with the right side up, rotate it, and then we'll go to the side, and rotate it. down, rotate it, and go to the other side, not sure if I was on this side or not, I'll turn it upside down, and rotate it. down rotate it Close up Now you'll notice all of our white p points have been hit and sometimes it auto accepts. If not, we can tell it that it's done. And now it tells us that the new offsets are such and such and these have been saved. We can hit OK. And the new compass number two offsets, we can hit OK. And now go on to the next. Now it says, what autopilot version do you own? We're going to say the Pixhawk. And it says, what sensor are you using? And it gives you a picture of the power module. And that's what we're going to pick. Even though we're running a 4-in-1 ESC, we're going to pick the 3DR power module. And then it asks us the battery size. We're running 5200 milliamps. So we'll type that in and hit next. We don't have a sonar module, so we'll hit next. And now it asks us for our radio endpoint calibration. So we're going to hit continue. It says please ensure your 
receiver is connected to your autopilot and bound to your transmitter. Well, we've done that in previous steps, so we're just going to turn on the radio. Hit continue. And then hit calibrate radio. Okay, so we'll move our I'm in mode 2, so my throttle's on the left, and I also have it reversed. So we'll move the throttle up and down. And then to the left, to the right. Okay. We'll move our pitch up and down. And our roll to the left and to the right. And then if you remember, in our uh, initial radio setup, we had set all the auxiliary channels to gear. So we just want to flip the gear switch up and down. And then I just turned on the gear switch because we have everything set to gear. And then I'll turn that off again. Now it'll tell us to make sure all our sticks are centered and throttle is down and click OK to continue. Gives us the readings. We're going to hit OK. And now we're completed. It says completed. Don't hit this button again or it'll take you back through the radio calibration. So now we can hit next. And the software tells us that the flight modes based on our switch position are all stabilized and we're going to leave it that way for now later on when you uh, you can set up your different flight modes but you have to have your flight modes in stabilize in order to arm the quadcopter so we're going to leave it all at say at stabilize and click save modes and now it tells us that that's complete. So now we'll go next. And these are our fail safe options. So for now, we're going to leave them all disabled. And then our geofence settings. Uh, this will set a maximum altitude and the maximum radius that the quadcopter will be limited to fly within. So for now, we're going to leave this disabled and click Next, and then Finish. 